Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Eduardo. I'm a second year medical student and today we're going to be learning about implantation. So on the previous video we talked a little bit about fertilization. So that's the process of combining the male gamete with the female gamete and then pretty much just start our development. And today we're going to be moving on from that. So we're going to be looking at from fertilization into implantation which takes approximately uh, around six days, six or seven days, so around, around a week um, into development. And during this time, the embryo is already developing. So it is already multiplying, dividing, and uh, we'll have a look at that. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. So we start here at the ampullary isthmic junction where fertilization takes place. Um, here, the fertilized egg, which is now called a zygote, will start moving from the fallopian tubes all the way into the uterus, uh, where implantation takes place. Now, as we can see from this image, as the egg moves from the fallopian tubes into the uterus, it will be dividing, right? So it will go from that one cell, which is the egg. As soon as fertilization occurs, it will divide into a two-cell zygote. Right? And this will then contain 4 cells, 8 cells, 16 cells, and, and so on. So we should go have a look at that developing embryo to really see what's going on. Uh, but before we do that, let's just make sure we know some of the important terminology in early embryogenesis. So a zygote is just a term used for a, a fertilized egg. Then as that egg starts developing, it becomes an embryo. And up to the ninth week after conception, uh, so that's called an embryo, after that, it, it, it then starts being called a fetus. So there you have it. Um, the stages shown in red are the ones that happen while we're still in the fallopian tubes. And then once we get into the uterus, those are the stages shown in blue. And as we can see there, if we look at the red stages, um, the, the embryo is uh, encapsulated by this ring, right? This ring-like structure. And that is the zona pellucida. So that surrounds the egg still, right? When we have that fertilization. And so as we can see, um, it is not really growing in size, right? The, the developing embryo, it's essentially just dividing itself, uh, but it's not really growing because it is encapsulated by that zona pellucida. And for the most part of the, this initial uh, week of development, it will be, it will remain encapsulated by the zona pellucida until we have something called hatching. So kind of like a, a, an actual egg, it, it does hatch. Um, so that's the blastocyst hatching. And we will show, we will have a look at that properly in just a bit. So there are some important names that we just saw uh, in that previous picture. The first one being a morula. So the morula stage uh, happens around the third day of development and that's when we can't really see the divisions between each individual cell. At that stage the, um, the embryo has 16 cells or more and the unimportant characteristic of the morula is that all the cells there are totally potent, meaning they can become any cell in your body. So they haven't undergone differentiation yet. Now this morula will develop into the next important stage, which is called a blastocyst. So the main characteristic of the blastocyst is the presence of a fluid filled cavity called the blastocyl cavity. And this happens uh, by cells essentially going to the outer portion and they will start to essentially just pump fluid in to create that cavity. And at the blastocy uh, blastocyst stage, that's where we have our first differentiation of cells. Uh, so a blastocyst will contain a inner cell mass and then a trophoblast. So at first, this blastocyst is uh, going to be encapsulated by the zona pellucida until we have the, the hatching. And this step is very important for implantation to take place. Because if the zona pellucida is still there, it essentially won't be able to interact with the lining of the uterus and we won't have a series of important reactions uh, resulting in 
or the death of that embryo. So now let's just have a look at a video. Um, so this is a, a video under microscope that will actually show all those developmental stages that we talked so far. And then we can go on into seeing exactly how implantation takes place. So I'm recording this on a different day, that's why I changed clothes, but um, the video that we were just watching right now is not of a human embryo, as that would raise a lot of ethical questions, um, but nevertheless it is the same process going on, so we can still learn from it. So right now we have a blastocyst in the uterus, and this blastocyst is going to be composed of different types of cells, because we've had that first differentiation. So there are two main types of cells that we can see here. Um, so the first one being the trophoblast. These are the cells that will actually invade the endometrium and uh, end up forming the placenta. And then we have the inner cell mass, which will develop into the baby. Now, the part of the trophoblast that is immediately adjacent to the inner cell mass is called the embryonic pole. And that is the part of the trophoblast that will come in contact with the endometrium at implantation. Now, at the time of attachment, there is a further differentiation uh, that takes place. So the trophoblast will differentiate into cytotrophoblasts and syncytiotrophoblasts. The cytotrophoblast is a layer of ovoid mononucleated cells that lie right below the syncytiotrophoblast. And the syncytiotrophoblast is a multinucleated, multicellular mass that invades the endometrium and is actually formed from the fusion of cytotrophoblast cells. Humans have what is called interstitial implantation, where the embryo completely burrows into the superficial layer of the endometrium. So that a uh, syncytiotrophoblast breaks down the ex extracellular matrix and induces the apoptosis of endometrial cells, allowing for its implantation. Uh, so the baby ends up actually developing inside the wall of the uterus and not necessarily at the uh, lumen of the uterus. Now the endocrine function of the syncytiotrophoblast begins with the onset of implantation when we get the production of human chorionic gonadotrophin, or HCG, uh, which is the hormone that is picked up in pregnancy tests. HCG works to maintain the corpus luteum and progesterone secretion so that the endometrium is maintained and capable of supporting pregnancy. Now, as the embryo develops, the syncytiotrophoblasts then um, gain the ability of producing progesterone enough to support pregnancy on its own without the need of the corpus luteum. Uh, this occurs around the 10th week of gestation and at which point the corpus luteum is not really needed anymore. Now the syncytiotrophoblasts uh, end up developing into the placenta 
but we won't go into much detail on placentation on this video. There is also a maternal reaction to implantation called the decidual reaction. So this involves a transformation in the endometrial stroma, where stromal cells become enlarged and filled with lipids and glycogen. And at this point, the endometrial stroma is then referred to as the decidua. So this process is characterized by the morphological change in the epithelial stromal cells, um, secretory transformation of the uterine glands, an influx of specialized uh, uterine natural killer cells, and vascular remodeling to support the maternal blood supply to the growing conceptus. So decidualized epithelial stroma cells will provide nutrition to the growing conceptus. But it also forms an epithelial-like sheet with uh, adhesive junctions that will inhibit the migration of the implanting embryo. So decidualization allows a, regulator, a regulated invasion of the embryo. So it will prevent uh, conditions such as placenta increta or, or percreta, which are, are conditions where uh, the placenta essentially invades too much. Uh, so for example, we can reach the myometrium, which poses a, a, a threat to the baby and to the mother, uh, especially during uh, labor or birth where it can be involved with hemorrhage, so um, loss of a lot of blood. So an appropriate decidual reaction will prevent conditions such as placenta percreta or increta, where the placenta essentially just invades too much. And that essentially is it for implantation, is it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. And if you're a student, uh, any student, uh, you don't have to be in the health field or be a medical student, there is a, a Discord in the, in the description below. Um, it is essentially just for students to help each other uh, study, uh, motivate to study and so on. So go check it out and I hope you enjoy.